Hey everybody, let's do um, part two of this Hawaiian shirt design. So last time we cut out the shirt and came up with the design motif using these pieces of paper to cut out and trace some shapes. And then we talked about the idea of color schemes and try to pick a color scheme or have a plan for how we were gonna color the shirt using the idea of pressure and texture and layers to get everything colored in. So what we're gonna do now is make it look less like a t-shirt and more like an actual button-up Hawaiian shirt, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take and we're gonna cut a little bit down the center of the shirt, okay? So you should have a line there from where you folded it. So just cut two or three inches, okay, down to the center. And then you're gonna fold this over to make the collar of the shirt, okay? So depending on how wide open you make it, but you kind of want it to line up near that top of the shoulder. And that'll make this cool little collar shape and more of a, a V-neck shape for the shirt, okay? It doesn't have to be perfect. Now when you do that, you're gonna end up with a white space there. So you can either color that like the background of your shirt, okay? Or you can take part of your actual shape that you had there and you can trace part of it on there. So maybe on this one, I will trace a little bit of the flower design, okay? Onto there. So it seems like it's still part of the actual fabric of the shirt, okay? And maybe on this one, we'll put a little bit of the palm tree into there, okay? And then I can look back and figure out which colors I used. There we go, dark green. Which colors I used when I colored those things in last time and do the same thing so that this kind of blends in and becomes part of the background, okay? So let me finish that up, and then we'll talk about putting some buttons on for the middle part. Okay, so let's put some buttons on the shirt, okay? Find a strip of paper that is a color that you wanna use for your buttons, and then fold it in half twice so you have four layers of paper there. And then just cut out whatever shape you want for your button, okay? It could be a square, it could be a triangle, it could be an octagon, okay? So, whatever. There's lots of shapes out there to choose from, okay? I don't think I'm gonna be super creative for this one. We're just gonna go with four round buttons that then we can glue on and call it good for our Hawaiian shirt. I mean, you could be more creative and do a palm tree shaped button if you wanted to, like I did on this example here, but you know, I think this will be all right for now. But you're thinking, Mr. Moose, this video is like three minutes long. I don't know that we really needed an entire video for you to show us how to make a collar and buttons, okay? That's a good point, okay? You could just stop right now if you wanted to, okay? But where's the fun in that, okay? So I think when you go to Hawaii, sometimes they give you something called a lei, which is like one of those flower necklaces. And so if we're gonna do that, maybe we should make something like that. I'm gonna give you two ways to do it. One way, you can grab some paper and finish up today, and the other way, you're gonna to have to do some painting and then you can finish it up once your paint is dry. So let's see the first way with just paper. Okay, so let's grab some paper here and try this. Let's move this shirt out of the way for a moment and take some paper, okay? So this paper is nine inches by 12 inches, but you can use whatever size works for you, okay? I'm going to fold this in half twice, okay, 
And then I'm gonna open it back up and I'm gonna fold it into thirds, okay? So when I fold it into thirds, I'm looking for this to be a square and this to be a square, okay? And that gets me pretty close to thirds. It may not be perfect, but close enough, okay? And so then everything's folded and I have 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, okay? And so for what we're doing here, we just want to cut out 12 flowers, okay? So if you're lucky enough to have a flower shape, you can go ahead and just tr trace it onto the paper 12 times. If you want more flowers, then you can cut out more, but Twelve usually works just fine. So you can trace those all through there. If you want to do like double when you cut them out, then slide another piece of paper behind there, okay? You might even want to grab some tape and tape the two pieces of paper together for a little while while you cut out, but you can cut out multiple flowers that way so that you have a whole bunch. But why don't I just trace 12 and then cut these out and I'll show you how to put them together to finish the lay. And then I'm gonna show you how to make painted flowers because those might actually be a little bit cooler. Okay, so I've got them all cut. I've got my other piece of paper behind here. So there's a lot of different ways to cut these out, but I think you get the idea and you don't need to watch me do it all, okay? But I'm going to cut out all these flowers and then we'll make our flower necklace or our lei out of the flowers that we cut out, okay? So just cut out those flower shapes and then put them over here. We'll put together this necklace so that we can get that all figured out. All right, cool, so I got them all cut out. I might wanna make them look more like flowers by putting a little center in there for each one, and that's fine. We can do that. Then we're just gonna string them onto a piece of yarn or a string, so you'll need to find something like that. The easiest way to do that is to have a tapestry needle or something, but you can make it work if you don't have a needle and the quickest way is to end up poking a hole through these. Just take them over to like your rug or your carpet or something with a pencil and just poke a little hole into the middle of the flower. I'll show you how to do that. All right, cool. So here's just a little doormat, right? So you can just go over. Stair carpet works really good for this usually because it's dark so you're not going to make any marks but just take your pencil and poke a hole in each flower okay if you want it to go right through the middle you might have to do them all at the same time but or all one at a time but if you think they're all mostly in the middle you can probably do two or three at once and get the holes poked through all of those, okay? All right, then we'll string them onto our line. Okay, cool, so if you have a tapestry needle at your house, good for you. I'm guessing most people don't have this, but if you do, okay, then put your yarn in your tapestry needle. Use this little paper airplane looking thing, this needle threader, put your yarn in there and sandwich it in between and then slide the paper through the eye of the needle and pull it through. And then you can string these flowers on super easy, okay? So just slide them on one at a time. Okay, you could probably even do more than one at a time if you really wanted to, okay? If you don't have this tapestry needle, 
you can still make this work, okay? It's just a little bit trickier. There's a couple things you can do. You can try to push this through, but it's probably not going to work very well. You can try to widen the hole a little bit with your pencil, and that's probably the best thing to do. And then you can try to push that yarn through with the pencil, and that'll work okay. If you make the hole too wide, though, the flowers won't stick in place, right? So you don't want it so wide that the flowers don't kind of stick to the yarn. You don't want them to move all over the place. So if you punch that hole through there really wide, they're going to fall down, okay? And they're not going to lay very well onto the actual yarn, okay? So just make the hole just wide enough that you can take your pencil and poke enough of it through to pull through, okay? What will sometimes happen is the yarn will start to unravel. So in order to keep that from happening, you might want to grab a piece of tape and tape the end of the yarn down and make almost like an aglet, like the end of your shoelace, that little piece of plastic that's on there. Okay, so if you have a piece of tape or masking tape, just take it and tape it onto the end of your yarn and wrap it up as tightly as you can, okay, and twist it so that it almost makes a little needle, okay, and that'll actually help you do this job. You might be able to get away with not poking the holes quite so wide if you do it this way with the tape needle, okay which works out pretty good, okay? So we've got all those strung onto there, okay? So once they're strung onto there, all you have to do is kind of pull them out and get them arranged so that they look kind of cool, and then we'll put them on to the actual shirt. So let me kind of straighten these out a little bit. Just pull them down one at a time and get them spread out a little bit, okay? You wanna have enough string through on the back side. So try to put them kind of in the middle and pull them around until you have everything spread out, okay? And you can see at least part of most of your flowers, okay? Then we can grab the shirt over here, and then we want to hole punch underneath the collar. If you have a hole punch, great, that'll be really easy. If you don't, you can do the same thing. Take this shirt over there to wherever you punch the holes in the flowers and poke a hole in the back of the shirt. All right, Whew, magic, right? So I've got the hole punch here. So I'm going to just go behind the collar so that that will be hidden behind the collar. I'm gonna punch that hole through there, okay? And then we'll take the flowers and we'll loop this lay through onto the back side here and onto the back side here and then pull it through okay so now you have your lay there with your Hawaiian shirt okay you don't want it to fall off so you should flip it here to the back side and then just grab your tape again and tape those into place, okay? I guess you could tie them in the middle and then you could hang it up or whatever, but let's just tape them into place. So grab your tape. Tape that right there. Right over the hole is fine. You tape right over the hole, it'll kind of reinforce that part. And then you can finish everything up.
we might want to cut off those extra pieces, but hey, there we go. We got a Hawaiian shirt. Now, if you like that, you're fine, you're good. Let me show you one more quick way to make some more interesting flowers with some watercolor paint or some markers. All right, cool. So what I did was uh, folded my paper and traced my flower, just like I did on the color paper before, but on white paper. So you can drag your little slider back and find that if you can't figure out what I did just now, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline each flower with crayon, okay? That'll help hold the watercolor paint into place. Okay. If you're using watercolor paint, if you're using marker, you don't have to worry about it as much. Okay. And I'm going to still stick with my color scheme because I like it and we'll just keep going with that. So what I usually do is outline them with one of the colors that I used in my design. Whatever. And then, okay, you can do a couple of different things, okay? You can put the center in the flowers with the same color, right? Or you can mix and match the colors if you want to. It's up to you. I'll let you figure that out. You've got lots of choices here. And then what I usually do is take a white crayon, okay, and then draw lines going out from the center of the flower, okay? And you probably have done this before, so you know what's going on here. If you, if you use crayons, then make sure that they're not the ultra washable crayons, that they're the regular ones, because the ultra washable ones tend not to be very good for this watercolor resist type of painting that we're doing here, but the regular crayons will be fine. If you have oil pastels, those should work even better than crayons. But this should be fine for what we're going to do here. Okay. And then find some watercolor. Okay. If you have some watercolor at home, great. If it's the pan watercolors, you need to get it really wet. So you need to get lots of water in it so that it'll work. If you have tube watercolors like I'm gonna use here, if you have a spray bottle at home, that's a great way to add water and mix those colors together with the water so that they'll flow on really nicely, okay, when you do this. So we'll do about half of these, okay? If you want the middle of your flower to stay white, then you could color it in with the white. Let's do a couple of those just in case, because that might actually look pretty cool. We'll color in the centers with white. Okay, and then let's flow on some color here and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna paint this yellow flower with the blue watercolor, okay, and it's gonna push that away. All right, and then get a little more water here, and let's paint this one. Okay, oh, looks like I forgot to put the white lines in that first one over there. Okay, that's okay. Jesus erases all of our mistakes. <laughs> all right. So we're just gonna flow that on. You can see that the resist is making that work pretty well. Okay, so that's one way to do it, okay? The other way to do it is with another color, of course, but what if you did something kind of cool here, okay? If you have your spray bottle, spray water onto it first, okay, and then just dab the paint onto there and let it kind of flow around inside, okay? 
of the color, okay? And then you can put another color in there and drop those colors into each other and then let those colors mix together that way. If you do it this way, you're gonna have to be a lot more careful, okay? Because you've got these colors kind of blending together and it's gonna take a lot longer for that to dry, but it looks really cool, okay? So that's another way to do it. You can just paint water. You don't have to have a spray bottle. You can just paint, this is called wet on wet. So the paint is going on wet paper. So it's wet paint on wet paper, okay? Wet on wet. And you can do this with all kinds of different colors, but I'm just sticking to my color schemes here. Okay, so I'm gonna dab those in together and I'm gonna let those colors mix together with each other a little bit and blend. And that's gonna give me some pretty cool effects, okay? Some things that you can't get otherwise, okay? And some people like to tip the paper up and let it flow around there. So there's some pretty cool stuff that we can do with that, okay? This video is getting kind of long, but this is pretty cool, so we'll stick with it. The other thing you can do is after you've done that, if you don't have watercolors and you don't want to do all of the painting thing, take some markers out. If you have some markers at your house and just color the flower in with the marker, okay? And you'll get kind of the same effect, okay? The watercolor marker, the water-based marker will be resisted by the crayon, okay? and you can get kind of the same effect. It's not exactly the same, and I don't think it looks nearly as cool as actual watercolor paint, but you get the idea. You can get some something like that to work there, even if it's not exactly perfect, okay? Probably not as cool as watercolor, but you get the idea, you can do that. Maybe you don't have watercolors at home, but you have some markers, so you can do it that way. Of course, we're just gonna let those dry, probably overnight, and then cut them out, poke holes, string them onto the string, just like we showed on the first part of the video, and then you'll have your cool lay with your watercolor flowers as well. So try that out, see what you get, okay? That's it, that's the end. Hope you guys had a good time. Talk to you guys later, bye-bye.